you're seeing and hearing is a Moog modular synthesizer probably built around 1970 by Robert Moog. Um, and what I'm going to do is just uh, show you a few of the different modules, uh, sort of reconstruct this strange sound that you're hearing now uh, by pulling out all of the patch cores that are making it work and trying to rebuild it. Uh, it's rare that you can actually get the synthesizer to sound exactly the way it sounded the previous time, which is why you should always have your tape recorder running or your computer recording. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do is just basically uh, pull all the patch cords out so that it's silent and then see if I can rebuild a sound that's something like this. Okay, so first we'll turn it down and we'll just pull out every single patch cord. And what I'll do is I'll start reinserting patch cores and explaining the different modules along the way. What you've been hearing is actually just the sound of a single oscillator, but it's being modulated by a couple of other oscillators passed through a filter and a reverberator and an amplifier so that it has various stages at which it might be modified in some way by some other signal. And that's the basis of the Moog modular synthesizer, is that you have some modules which generate sounds, and then other modules which can be used to modulate or change that sound. So I'm going to start out uh, really simply by just trying to make a sound, any sound, by taking the output of an oscillator, uh, which creates a classic waveform, and sending it to the mixer where I hope all of the sound will eventually come out. So, I'll send it over here, and I'll turn up the volume, and we hear a tone. It's kind of a sinusoidal tone, and the same oscillator has the output jacks that allow you to hear different classic waveforms, the sine tone, the sawtooth tone, which has energy at all the harmonic frequencies of that fundamental sine tone, the pulse tone, which has generally only the odd harmonic frequencies, and then the uh, triangle form, which has the odd frequencies but sloping off at a more rapid rate so it's not quite as bright and buzzy. I'm going to choose the buzziest and most obnoxious of the sounds just because it's the richest and allows the most opportunity for processing, but I'll probably turn it down from time to time so it doesn't get too annoying. <laughs> The frequency of that oscillator can be changed by a couple of different knobs. This one allows you to change it in steps that are approximately equal to an octave, and they're labeled in ways that correspond to old organ pipes. So this is the 16-foot stop, 8-foot, 4-foot, and 2-foot. And then it, within those low frequencies, or with any, with any frequency, given frequency range, we have a continuous knob which allows us to adjust more finely within that range. And then this oscillator is actually being controlled by this uh, additional set of controls over here, so I have further control of the frequency. I can get it to go even lower if I want, or higher. So I have fine control there, and a couple of kind of coarse controls here get it down to the very bottom of our range of hearing and eventually to the point where it's simply we're hearing, simply hearing it uh, independent events. And in fact there's a there's a stop here that's just called low. Like so. But in this case we want to hear it as a tone, so I'm going to put it up somewhat higher. Not like that ought to do. And as I say it's kind of obnoxious sound all by itself. It's very static. There's nothing, not much life to it at all. So I'm going to see what I can do to give it a little bit of life. I'm going to take another oscillator. This time I'm going to use a sine wave form. And it's an oscillator that I don't particularly want to hear. I just want to use it to modulate the frequency of this first oscillator that we are hearing. So I'm going to take it over here and plug it into the control input of that oscillator and see what we get. Okay, rather a radical change. Uh, but it, uh, we can at least hear the, the change in rate of modulation if I change the frequency of this controlling oscillator over here. So you can hear it's doing this kind of sinusoidal up and down shape, and I have control over how fast that happens.
but I don't really have control over how deep the modulation is. In other words, it's a very wide fluctuation in frequency. So what I'm going to try doing is taking the output of that sine wave and actually sending it through this mixer over here, which will allow me a little bit of control over, um, over the amplitude and really the depth of the modulation. So it's kind of like an amplifier that allows me to turn down the signal a little bit to vary the amplitude of this modulating waveform. So I'm going to plug that in there. I'm going to take its output, the output of the mixer, and send it to the control input. So it's pretty wide there, but I can turn it down so that it's virtually absent, so that it's rather slight, or deeper, or kind of ridiculously deep, or just crazy deep. But let's go with something that's only moderately silly. And maybe at the same time, what I would like to do is, with every single undulation of that frequency, I'd also like to put an amplitude envelope on it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the output of the, frequency, of the oscillator that we're listening to, and I'm going to send it through a voltage-controlled amplifier. That's an amplifier that can also be modulated by another signal. So I'm going to send it into this amplifier and then take the output of that amplifier to my speakers to hear it. So no big change there, but the difference is that now I can actually use some other oscillator to control the on and off or the amplitude envelope of that. In this case, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a square wave or a pulse wave that has exactly the same rate as the modulating oscillator so that we're going to get something that's sort of like repeated notes. In other words, it's a square wave like that. So it's going to suddenly turn the amplifier up and then down. And by changing the width of that pulse, I can make it almost continuous or I can make it like separate notes. Just for the fun of it, okay, kind of annoying, isn't it? Just for the fun of it, because that's so. Uh, well, before we do anything else, let's take this other generator here, which is a, a white noise generator. It's just generating random noisy sound. I'm going to add that to the sinusoidal mix, so which will just kind of mess up that sinusoidal fluctuation of frequency, make it not quite sinusoidal, but a little bit noisy, literally. Let's see what happens if I do that. Okay, it's just a little bit buzzier and nastier. What I'm trying to do essentially is mess up the signal because I want it to be nice and rich and full of strange frequencies when I send it through this voltage controlled filter over here. This is a low pass filter which allows me to decide to freak, filter out some of the higher frequencies, but it's also controllable by an oscillator, so I can uh, make it do a strange and periodic frequency shifts. 